This is a um, the water tower from your hometown of Ada, Oklahoma. And what is Ada? Why is it called Ada? Do you know? Why is it called Ada? Yeah. Who was Ada? A person? <laughs> I don't know who the hell that was. I'm sure it was somebody. Yeah, I'm sure okay. it was like a Chickasaw well, princess a... or something like that. It I seems see. Like, but... And is this where do people still get the water from this tower, or is it defunct? What are you talking? <laughs> <I> get, <laughs> you're not get, from Ada at I, all, are you? <laughs> you're you're from New York. York. <laughs> we never even actually thought about the fact that there may be water in that. It's just a landmark. It's just the it's the tallest building in, in Ada. It's the water tower. It's, How tall is this water tower? I don't know. It's <laughs> you don't know. It's growing up. Have it was you huge. ever been to Ada, Oklahoma? <laughs> <laughs> I never gave a crap about that water tower until I left. And uh, now it says Ada on it, and it's a big deal. You it's ever like climbed the Hollywood sign. Top of it or anything Ada. like that, or uh, nothing like that? No. Huh. Most people that ever tried to climb up that are dead. <laughs> What can you say about water towers? Every city and town has at least one. They hold water. Sometimes they advertise the local high school sports teams. Often a tower is simply the tallest and most recognizable structure in the community. Ada has four water towers to serve its population. Like the vast majority of water towers, they don't have much to offer outside of their utilitarian function of overhead water storage. Except that is for the elder statesmen of the bunch which has a fascinating story to tell. Known locally as the Witch Hat Tower, this standpipe, as the tower was sometimes called 100 years ago, is nearing a century of service to the city of Ada and is about to undergo a soup to nuts rehabilitation project. Durable and long lasting doesn't even begin to capture this tower's narrative, which begins at what would eventually be labeled by engineers as one of the seven wonders of the modern world. Uh, the Panama Canal is actually an idea that goes back uh, really to the 1850s because the British and the Americans had both decided that trade with the Pacific was going to be important and if you were in New York City and wanted to trade to the Pacific Coast or to the Pacific Islands, it was a 12,000 mile trip just to the tip of South America. And so the British and the Americans actually negotiated a treaty to plan for building a canal. Now, they never got very far with that, but that, can, that provision was in place. And so the entire intention all, all along was cut the amount of time that was necessary to get from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. The canal was a great investment for us. And uh, it was a great investment for the world. I mean, it's one of those, if there had been some sort of call for nations to cooperate, this would have been something that everyone would have said, yeah, we should do this. At the dawn of the 20th century, the United States was positioning itself as a political and economic superpower, and its ambitious leader, President Theodore Roosevelt, wanted to demonstrate that prowess to the rest of the world. He seized on an opportunity to do just that when France failed to complete a passageway connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The French would actually be the first to decide on Panama, and the French fail, and fail miserably. It's an eight-year effort, and uh, they finally just abandon the project. They even leave their equipment where it's at. And um, Teddy Roosevelt will pick up on the idea that we need a canal, that we need to be the builders of the canal. And there you get into the sort of secondary effort of the canal as a project. And that is Teddy Roosevelt wants the United States to accomplish the canal because it will prove our superiority. The French have failed, the British are uncomfortable with the idea of attempting that much expenditure. And so Roosevelt says, this is the engineering marvel uh, for the new century and we are going to accomplish it. 
and so Roosevelt sets about the task of acquiring the property, or at least the right of way, and then building the canal, putting America's resources to the test. And uh, we will spend uh, almost a third of the budget for what we expect the canal to cost and don't turn a speck of the earth. In the spring of 1904, the United States took over the Panama Canal project. By 1906, canal construction was in full swing. On the Atlantic side of the canal, near the village of Gatun, an unremarkable steel water tower was erected for a temporary fresh water supply. The 400,000 gallon tower was built and sold to the federal government for use at Gatun by the Chicago Bridge and Ironworks. Roosevelt saw us as we were an adolescent growing into manhood in Roosevelt's eyes. The Civil War had been our crucible, and now it was time for us to emerge on the world stage as the, the preeminent nation. And you can take that all the way back to when Roosevelt is the uh, Assistant Secretary of Navy before the Spanish-American War. Roosevelt knows that having coaling stations in the Pacific, having an empire, is the measure of uh, being a great nation. And this is one more step on that path. Situated on a hill not far from the northern mouth of the Panama Canal, the storage tower provided fresh water to local villagers and American construction crews in the canal zone for 11 years, three years beyond the official opening of the canal in 1914. By 1917, the tower had fulfilled its purpose in the canal zone, but its usefulness at that point had only been tapped. The United States uh, helps pay for the building of a reservoir at Mount Hope, and uh, that's probably the water that's being used in the water tower. 56,000 people build the canal, so once you move that population out, you don't need as much water. And so it becomes important then to uh, streamline the uh, area around the canal zone, around the locks. Probably removing the tower at that point would have been the uh, ideal thing for the government's position of a clean site, because the other thing they're worried about is uh, how will we protect the canal? Uh, the government wrote a report in uh, 1910 that said any crazy person with uh, a stick of dynamite could disrupt the activity of the canal and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, you can do a lot about it if there's less places for people to hide or uh, blow up. You know, you end up with what is the essential needs of the canal by removing things like the water tower that moves to Ada. Back in Ada, while the Panama Canal was being built under the watchful eye of the Witch Hat Tower, business at the Oklahoma Portland Cement Company was booming. Ada in general was growing faster than infrastructure could follow. In 1907, City of Ada leaders built a reservoir to assure the company of a steady water supply. Ten short years later, Ada's residents and the cement plant needed more water than the reservoir could provide. In 1916, city leaders started looking for a permanent solution. Meanwhile, on the international stage, things were beginning to fall into chaos with the outbreak of the First World War. And the war sort of interrupts the sort of smooth opening of the canal to worldwide trade, to any nation who wants to use it. We sort of regulate that during the course of the war. The United States, on a terrific growth pace mirrored in thousands of its young communities like Ada, wanted to stay out of the conflict. But by 1917, the same year the Witch Hat Tower was decommissioned in the Panama Canal Zone, the United States entered the war. We probably don't get back to production of steel for uh, private consumption into 1919, 1920, 
and Ada would have been competing with everybody else in the United States who wanted to expand. And so they either would have had to have had an order placed when the war began, or they would have been well down the line. And you even got, you know, orders for steel for rebuilding uh, France and Germany. The city of Ada indeed found it impossible to purchase a new steel water tower in 1917. Because of the war, however, new steel simply was not available to any entity outside the federal government. Faced with a thirsty populace and desperate for a solution, the city hired the Benham Engineering Company out of Oklahoma City to help. The engineering firm was already hard at work on improving Ada's young but already insufficient water infrastructure. The government sort of sets the schedule for trains, for the production of goods, and so they're going to create an environment in which the city of Ada, when they want to get a water tower, the city of Ada uh, can't buy a new water tower. There's not any iron and steel available. Uh, the government's already bought it all up. The city of Ada made a very wise choice in hiring someone to search at that point. Like finding a needle in a haystack, the resourceful engineers at Benham stumbled across the decommissioned Witch Hat Tower, which had recently returned to Chicago Bridge and Ironworks. The timing couldn't have been any better for the city of Ada. Although it was a little smaller than the half million gallon storage tower the city had envisioned, it was available and that was enough. In 1918, the Witch Hat Tower was installed at a high point on Ada's south side where it has dutifully served ever since. City leaders were thrilled to have it. Even the Benham engineers seemed exceedingly pleased with the rare find. The following report appeared shortly after in the company's newsletter. Considering that the tank was in operation for 11 years under what is presumed to be the worst climatic conditions, the company is more than ever convinced that its claims as to the durability of its structures is fully justified. While it is not often that a second-hand structure of this type is available, prospective purchasers should bear in mind that the dismantling and re-erection of a water tower are entirely feasible and should investigate the possibility of securing a second-hand outfit. By doing so, they may be able to satisfy their own requirements and help conserve the supply of steel for the use of our government and our allies. The city of Ada bought the slightly used tower for about $34,000 in the summer of 1917. It is set to undergo a half million dollar rehabilitation in the summer of 2015. Nobody would argue that it has been worth every penny. The story doesn't end there. An exciting new chapter has recently been written. In 2014, Ada Native and country music superstar Blake Shelton featured the Witch Hat Tower on the cover of his number one selling album, bringing back the sunshine. Now, millions of people have been introduced to an amazingly reliable structure with a unique history, even if they're unaware of it. You know, I never would have thought that uh, Ada's water tower came from the Panama Canal Zone, and certainly that the tower was a hundred plus years old uh, in terms of its actual age. I knew the tower was old when I, you know, I can remember driving into Ada and seeing the water towers. I was driving up Broadway from 32nd Street and I thought, that's a really cool water tower. But then uh, to know it's 100 years plus, it's just even more amazing. When the U.S. government turned a dangerous 12,000 mile ocean voyage around the tip of South America, into an easy 48-mile jaunt across Central America, the Witch Hat Tower was there. When one of this country's most popular singers wanted the perfect album cover, the Witch Hat Tower was more than happy to oblige. It has presided quietly over nearly a century of growth in Ada while securely holding precious water for its people. Here's hoping the complete overhaul keeps it in service for another 100 years. <laughs>